Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's edition of Awaken the Wonder. I'm excited to join you today from the studio here in Orlando, Florida. And I have a very special guest who's been a friend of mine for years now. I actually met him by attending a church in Kissimmee, Florida that he actually helped to pioneer and even plant. And um, it's pretty cool to have him in the studio today. Uh, he's a businessman and he now is hitting the 40 year mark with State Farm. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, welcome to the program, Bill. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Now, uh, right off the top, I'll just, uh, I know we're going to hit the reason why in a little bit, but uh, Bill, uh, you go, people can go to BillPancake.com and yes. they can stay connected to you. Yes. But you gave me a reason why, because most people think, well, it's just for insurance, right? But you said it was for another reason, too. Well, it's for life assurance, <laughs> not just life insurance. <laughs> uh, Bill is an, has been a believer in the Lord for, for, uh, for decades now, and um, through his ministry, as he sees State Farm as a ministry, he's been able to affect a lot of people. Um, the reason we're having Bill in today is because uh, when we have evangelists and missionaries and pastors, many people can easily see the ministry type elements that go to what they do day to day. But Bill sees ministry in all that he does, even in the business world. And uh, this is the area that many of you on your way to work today are trying to figure out how to bring Jesus into the workplace. And I thought Bill would be a perfect person to address that topic. Before we do that, though, Bill, how, how did you come to the Lord and how did you get connected into the things of the Lord? You know, I was uh, nine years old when I was living in Dayton, Ohio. My dad died in a car accident, tragically. I can remember when we were told about this, how we all cried, my siblings and myself, so uncontrollably. That whole day, I couldn't stop crying. I spent the night with a neighbor, and that night God came to me in a dream. And my dad was there. He took me by the hand. We walked together. And my dad said, Billy, which is what they called me then, it's going to be all right. And you know what? Faith came at nine years old. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was exactly. But after that, I was able to, I still cried, but it was not uncontrollable anymore. I had faith. I knew that everything was going to be all right. Wow, that's incredible. Now, you ended up um, going along in life and ended up getting a pretty good business head on your shoulders, right? Uh, was that easy for you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Take me through the journey a little bit. Well, you know, uh, Carolyn and I got married at a very young age. We've been married 53 years now. Come on. Wow. And I, I feel like I need to... <laughs> I'm going to applause you here in the studio. That's, that's so rare these days. And it's, it is rare, and it's a blessing. I went to work for the Marriott Corporation, and Marriott would fly me to their home office. I learned a lot of business aspects uh, when young Bill Marriott at the time took over the company from his dad. And that gave me a real background. And the day came when I decided, you know, I don't like working weekends and holidays and not be with the family. So I thought, if I could be anything, if I could do anything, what would it be? And I decided, I'll be a banker. Bankers look like they have a good schedule and they have a good time. So I moved to Florida. I went to Sun, Sun Bank. They said, sorry, we're in a recession. Haven't you heard? We're not hiring anybody. Here's an application, but don't bother to bring it back. Just mail it. I went home that Friday. I filled out the application. I prayed like I always do over any decision like this, especially. And on Sunday, the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, don't mail it, take it back in person. So Monday morning, I presented myself downtown Orlando. And they said, oh, we're so glad you came back. We didn't know how to reach you. And the next thing you know, I'm working for SunTrust. <laughs> Just like <that. laughs> I opened and managed the bank on Main Street USA at Walt Disney World, wow. a very unique bank. Uh, from there, I went to another bank. And then I had one of my customers who came in who was an insurance agent. This man was making more money than the president of our bank. I thought, you know what, I can do what he does. I had five children at home, I needed more money. So uh, I asked this guy, he was an Allstate, a senior Allstate agent. I said, how do I get involved? He said, I think you'd be good at it, but here's my advice, go to work for State Farm, or you're gonna fight State Farm your whole career. <laughs> <laughs> that seems he said, like if you can't thing. get on over there, you call me, we'll get you on. So uh, here I am 40 years later. I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up, and but that... I'll tell you this. <laughs> I always say I'm a Christian full time. 
and I sell insurance and financial services to buy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's got to eat. Everybody needs yes. some shoes to wear. And uh, what an incredible story. I want to just add one more quick note, you know, that I prayed for a year about becoming an agent wow. with State Farm. And my heart was that, Lord, if this is good for me, I would love to do this. If it's going to be a harm to me and, and not be good for me, please close the door. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, to whom much is given, much is required. And wow. if you're successful, you're going to do with it what I tell you. And I've tried to be faithful to that. Now, I want to God ask you blessed. more about that. But w what is it about prayer that has become such an integral part of your life? Was that, was that instilled in you? Or did you just know, I have to pray about every major decision? Or how did that happen? You know, my relationship with the Lord grew uh, from nine years old. Uh, I had a hunger for God. And I can remember as a boy that, you know, my mom was not a Christian. She'd take me to church and drop me off because she knew I needed the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would be hungry for God. I would, I would fall asleep at night reading the Bible. I can remember the Bible being on my chest when I'd wake up. So God put a hunger in me, and prayer just developed over time. And I think I just grew as a believer. Well, and your family has grown, and they, they're incredible people. I've met uh, a, a number of them who are all doing incredible things, and uh, they have certainly taken after their father, I could say. you know. Well, I tell, told Carolyn just last night, I said, how did we raise a, a bunch of leaders? <laughs> <laughs> and they are, too, I tell you. Now, you're, um, let, let's go before we go into your journey with how you bring Jesus into the workplace. I, I'd like to ask you about uh, the church that you helped to pioneer. I know your family has been an integral part of, of Life Church, but uh, tell uh, Life Church in Kissimmee for those yes. that would like to visit. But um, can you tell me a little bit about that journey of how you guys planted the church? I sure can. You know, uh, we were attending another church in Kissimmee, Calvary Assembly, and I had I watched all these people moving into our area. Uh, the area was booming, a lot of people moving. I didn't see enough growth in the churches personally. I think that was God, you know, putting that, focusing my attention that we needed to grow. And I approached our pastor and I said, let's plant a church. And for whatever reason, maybe because we needed to plant the church that I helped to plant, he said, no, we're not going to do that. But he said, you go ahead. And by the way, just to back up on a Sunday morning, I was praying. I remember at the altar in the church after the service and just asking God, you know, what should we do what, to grow, you know, in Osceola County to get, reach more people? And the Lord said, start the church. And so I thought, I'm not going to just do this on my own. I need to have a confirmation. Mm -hmm. And so that afternoon, I received a phone call from a friend that did not attend that church. And in our conversation, he said, Bill, I think it's time to start a new church. So that was my confirmation. It was not a, ever a question. And we started, uh, the first meeting was in a pizza parlor with maybe 73 people. Then we moved into an uh, assisted living facility that was being constructed. We outgrew that. Then God opened the door to go into a, a Kmart plaza. Kmart had closed, and we stayed there two years rent-free. Wow. So God, God has been in the middle of it all. It was interesting, you know, the church got planted without a pastor. Wow. I'm not a pastor. <laughs> I'm a full-time Christian, and I certainly have a ministry. I'm called, no question about that, in my mind. But we didn't have a pastor for the church. And so what we did is we took a group of our people. We prayed every day. We prayed every day from, you know, 5 in the morning till 7 or whatever. And then we got our leaders of that group together, and we prayed, had an all-night prayer meeting at our home, and just calling on God, show us who you want to lead our church. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me very clearly. He said, look in the front of your Bible. I opened the Bible up, and here was a missionary prayer card for Ernie DeLoach. Mm -hmm. And I picked up the card, and I told the men that were in that meeting, I said, I think we need to call Ernie. Next morning, I called him, and he said, you're kidding. He said, I, he was pastoring in the Bahamas where he was a missionary. And he said, I was just sitting on my porch. I had decided I'm coming off the mission field. God has spoken to me to pastor. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to check with other churches. If you're calling me to pastor, have somebody call me. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. And so Ernie became the founding pastor of Life Church. 
<laughs> There's that whole prayer thing again, right? Just yeah. right in the middle of it. You know, oh, it's, yeah. It's profound. Who wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, man, I love it. Um, so, so, Bill, you're, you're quite infectious to get around. Anybody who gets around you, they, they have a good time. <laughs> um, I have to say, even in my own uh, personal life, when, when we moved down into the area, uh, you, you came right on down, grabbed one of your boys and you guys were there helping me move and getting into the door. And, uh, you guys have been a part of even our journey, even with the ministry of kingdom encounters international, uh, pretty much since day one, you guys have been a part of, of, of sowing into this of praying for us. And we're just so moved by it. Um, through this though, we've been able to talk a number of times over the years, you even let us use your house one time for a recording. So, uh, but, but you have brought Jesus into the workplace and, and very creative ways. And you're always looking for ways to just introduce people to Jesus. And I, I just find it fascinating. Tell me some of the stories of, of, uh, of how that has happened. And then I want to go into how other people can do it as well. Thank you. You know, God has blessed me. And uh, the ring that I'm wearing today is a Lifetime President's Club member from State Farm. To get in the President's Club, you have to be in the top 50 agents. And if you want the lifetime with the diamond, you have to do it seven years in a row. Wow. I'm good, but I'm not that good. It's God's blessing. It's God's favor. But what it has done, Caleb, it has opened the door for people to ask me, why are you successful? We're selling our home in Kissimmee right now. And I was unloading my library, and there was a little book there that said, Jesus, CEO. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, because a lot of these are autographed, and I wondered, what is in this book? I'd forgotten. I opened it up, and there's someone had written in the front of the book, Dear Bill, you gave me a gift on December the 4th, 2006. And I just want to say thank you. He said, to say thank you is not enough. And he said, you're a great friend, and I'm so proud of how you've done. He was the State Farm agent in Kissimmee that I took his place. Mm -hmm. He went into management, came back into agency, Jim had called and said, Bill, how come you're successful? And I, just an example of a one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, Jim, I want to come to your office and tell you why. Mm -hmm. So I told him the same thing. I'm good, but I'm not that good, Jim. Let me tell you why. It's because of Jesus. Wow. Jesus has made such a difference in my life. He's poured blessings out on me that I can't contain. And he would do the same for you. Wow. Do you know Jesus, Jim? Wouldn't you like to know him? Let me explain that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I went through the Romans road with wow. Jim that day. Then I said, Jim, don't you want to ask Jesus to come in? He said, I do. I got up from my chair and I went around behind his desk. I put my hands on his back. I said, Jim, pray with me. And I led him in the sinner's prayer. That was the gift he was talking about in the front of this book. I didn't remember the book. Um, a few months later, we could have no idea that Jim would be gone. Wow. He'd been in the hospital for some reason. They had released him from the hospital. His wife was driving him home, and he expired in the car. Wow. So that was just one story. You know, um, my success that God has given to me, to whom much is given, much is required. I had so many opportunities. I can remember one uh, we went to, uh, I was invited to speak to a group of State Farm agents in Jacksonville. And there were 300 agents there that day. The, one of the senior company uh, officials opened that meeting. I think it was North Florida College, they called it. Uh, the next speaker was the head of the law department from Florida State University, and I followed that speaker. Wow. They had told me, the vice president that had invited me to speak, the leader from State Farm, he said, Bill, would you speak for us? Our company needs a Christian message. Wow. That was the invitation. <laughs> I probably prepared more for that speech than any other that I ever had. I had been in revival by then, personally. I was really, really touched by God, and I had an encounter. But I got up that day, and there was an anointing on my life. On the stage, it was like I had never experienced in a business setting. God showed up in a business setting. And it was so dynamic that as I shared, one of the things I shared was, and this would apply to today with COVID or an election or whatever's going on in your life, whatever's concerning you. It might be a loss of your job or the kids uh, are fighting or somebody. I don't know. It could be any situation at life. And I used an illustration. I used a milk jug. 
and I had 300 people watching this, and I said, what do you do when life presses in on you, when stresses come? And then if you suck on that milk jug, milk jug it collapses, and it's really dramatic. <laughs> Yeah. And I said, you know, I don't know about you, because now the thing's collapsed, but I said, when this happens to me with life, what I do is I call on God. And then you blow back and then it goes, <laughs> I said, and he fills me with his love. And then guess what? Everything's going great. Next thing you know, State Farm says we're leaving the state on homeowners. <laughs> <laughs> they can relate to that. And I said, I call out to God, and guess what? <laughs> he fills me with his love. And I did this several times, and people came up to me after that and said, you know, you have quite a stage presence. Uh, no. <laughs> it's called the anointing. There you go. <laughs> Another person said, I don't know this God that Bill Pancake talked about, but I want to find out. Wow. Yeah. Now, you've been on a lot of trips, and I know you've always prioritized always being Every in time. church. Every time. And <laughs> on these trips, if it's a Sunday, you're going to church, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and so that's actually had an effect on some of uh, some of the people that have had to travel with you. It's or had an effect you. on me, too. Yeah, there you way. go. <laughs> well, no, that's a good way to do it. Tell me about tell me about some of the you know looks you get on Sundays from non Christians or people that are just going away for a good weekend you know <laughs> on, on the company they're just getting away you know but you've had some people that have yeah. that have been affected by that well and some of the agents that travel with us uh, on these incentive trips that the company awards they know that I go to church on a Sunday I can remember I was going into the um, where was it Bermuda yeah. We were going to Bermuda that day, and going into the country, I asked some of the people that were going through customs, where's a good church? And they gave me the name of a church, wrote it down for me. So everybody's asking me, where are you going to church Sunday? So I shared it, and so that Sunday morning, there were 35 state farmers that showed up in this small church. This lady taught a tremendous Sunday school. I needed to use the restroom, so I excused myself. I came back, and Carolyn said, They've asked somebody to greet us from the State Farm Group, and we decided you were the one. She said, but don't preach. I said, Carolyn, I'm not going to preach. I'm in a foreign country. I got up on the platform. Hey, we're so happy to be here. We're from State Farm. And the next thing you know, the Holy Spirit came on me. <laughs> Caleb, I'm marching across the platform, and I'm preaching, they that hunger and thirst shall be filled. <laughs> and the pastor shouting, be free, brother, be free. And everybody's on their feet, jumping and shouting. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. So after this, I preached the Sunday morning message, by the way. He didn't preach. <laughs> you, you didn't listen to your wife. I right? couldn't help myself. After that, a lady, uh, one of the agent's wives from Winter Park went to Calvary Assembly there. And she, on a bus, we were going around to see something on a whatever. She said, Bill, I think you need to go to Russia. And I said, I have no desire to go to Russia. She says, well, I just think you need to go. And Caleb, that led to a trip to Russia where Carolyn and I taught in a Bible school there. Wow. That was at a time when the Spirit was moving and people were getting saved and there was no training. They didn't have a Bible school. Wow. And I can remember one young lady, 18 years old, who started having a Bible meeting at her home and 800 people were showing up. So we taught, I taught on the doctrine of God, the Holy Spirit, and Carolyn team taught with me, and it was an amazing experience. The Holy Spirit showed up. I, I was teaching on this, and one afternoon I said, Lord, I think the people are enjoying the study, but would you come and give them the experience of what we're talking about? And the Holy Spirit came into the room that afternoon, and this one started shaking, this one started laughing, this one was crying, they were slipping out onto the floor. <laughs> The, uh, the guy that was in charge of all this was a Baptist, and that's a fine. I mean, they got spirit-filled everybody, but he looked in the room, and I said, Sir, I didn't do anything. I didn't touch, touch anybody. <laughs> right. The Holy Spirit showed up. He said, Let's go get an ice cream. So we did. And I preached that night, and they were having services every night. There were Satanists outside, out there chanting, and... Uh, I had had a dream about that. God showed me in a dream that was going to happen. I knew what to do. I said, no more preaching. Let's pray. And I prayed for people. A lot of people got saved and healed and filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Come on. I love this. <laughs> you, you, you can tell <laughs> you stories all, all day, man. <laughs> well, I know, I know people that are listening love this, too. I mean, okay. these are stories that you don't see them on the news when you turn on. You know, no. all you see is political stuff or who said this or who didn't say that. And 
and, and it's all a bunch of finger pointing, but like we want to hear about the things of God, how God's moving, how he's shaking people, how he's stirring people. This is beautiful. I, um, I, I want to ask you, there's, there's people that are listening today and they say, I hear you, Bill. You just seem like an extra special an extra exciting, an extra favored, highly favored of the Lord individual. <laughs> and I would like to bring Jesus in, but I don't have any incentive trips or, you know, I, I'm just entry level in my job. I'm not quite making a difference. I don't even know how to talk to my coworker. What if my boss catches me or I might be fired? I mean, there's many thoughts that go through people's minds. And, and, and usually it's the fear and, and the doubt and the worry that prevents us from even taking a step. How could people start to bring Jesus in and introduce people to Jesus in these situations? Well, I think the first step is that you have to be, you have to be willing to allow the Lord to use you. It's been my experience that we can hear the voice of God. Sometimes you have to pay attention. The Lord may lead you to speak to a coworker. The Lord may lead you to speak to your boss. Um, and you've got to have the faith to believe that you've heard from the Lord. And the way to find it out is to try it. You've got to go ahead and step out in faith and, and be faithful to God. I have discovered that you don't have to. I mean, I've taught evangelism, but we didn't just teach it. We did it. Yeah. We'd go out and we'd evangelize. And so it's good to, you know, to, and I think you should study and prepare yourself. Preparation, Jesus prepared himself. He's our example. But you have to pay attention to what he's saying. God is always speaking. We have to hear what he's saying. Uh, it can be in the workplace for sure, and it does happen there. I can remember I had a customer one day that was with one of my team members. They were doing some business, and I always try to say hello. I went by, hey, how you doing? And the guy said, oh, not so good. And I said, why not? And I, or I think what happened, back it up, excuse me. I just said, hello, just, you know, how you doing? And then I said to him, see you later. And he said, uh, no, you won't see me later. And I said, why not? And he said, because I have cancer. I have two weeks to live. I said, sir, that's no excuse. He said, what do you mean? I said, don't you know Jesus? Well, I've heard about Jesus. So this was in the office in my case. Wow. And I remember kneeling at my team member's desk and I went through the Romans road with him and wow. I drew a little That's illustration beautiful. and I said, uh, don't you want to ask Jesus to come in? And he said, I do. And so I prayed the sinner's prayer with him there. Two weeks later, we got a phone call from the family. He was gone. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Another example, not in the workplace so much, but I think it illustrates my point. I was buying a surround sound system. And now this goes back 20 years ago. You don't always get to hear what God is. God is at work. He's at work. And we need to join he him is. in his work. Come on. So in any event, uh, buying this sound system, and I never remembered anything. I got the sound system, but I don't remember him. He sent me a letter. He said, you know, I just want you to know when you were buying that surround system that you said to me, give God a chance in your life. He can make a difference. That's all I said. He said, I couldn't get away from that. He said, I couldn't get away from it. It might have been a passing comment to you or just was. a general encouragement, it was. but it changed his life. It changed his life. Wow. He got saved. He said, our whole family is serving God today. Wow. 20 years later. 20 years later, I find out about this. That is beautiful. Bill, I know a lot of people are encouraged today hearing what you're talking about. They, they say, you know what? I, I want to I be a little more bold with my faith. I want to take advantage of opportunities. What are some ways they can open their eyes and just see what's right in front of them. Well, I think it starts again by, uh, you know, you have to be willing that, you know, you have to say to the Lord, Lord, here am I, use me. That's the first step. And then uh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting to be used by God. Yeah. So you're going to, you're doing your devotions, you know, you're in prayer. Um, try to, you know, learn to listen to the voice of God. I remember a book called Surprised by the Voice of God, and it was really opened a lot of people's uh, understanding to how we can hear the voice of God. And God speaks. I mean, it's just awesome the way that he does. I remember I was on the golf course one time with one of our state farm agents at a state farm function, and we were talking, and I said, uh, Rick, do you, know, do you know the Lord Jesus? And he said, oh, God, I don't want to hear about this. He gets out of the golf cart and he shanks the ball into the woods. <laughs> He wanted to take a walk. But I will assure you, I will assure you, Rick has never forgotten that conversation. 
And you know, and I guess you were a great evangelist. You probably you probably shanked your ball into the woods too, so he can't get away. I'm sure I did, but it wasn't because I was a great evangelist. I was a poor golfer. Yeah, I would encourage uh, I would encourage everyone uh, that you should just step out in faith. Don't be afraid. God will use you. Uh, he will. It's just amazing how that he will open doors for you at on the work in the workplace. I'm. I own my business, so I mean, I am in a, a unique position. Some of you are business owners, and you can start there too. Some of you are co-workers. You know, there's opportunity for you to bless and be a blessing, and it will bless you when you do it. It's just incredible. Now, I want to ask you uh, one final thing, I guess, related to what you're doing, but also just the word favor. I, I find um, that in your life, Bill, you're highly favored. <laughs> you, the Lord is on your life. It's obvious to everybody you're around. The Lord's on your marriage. The Lord's on your family. It's, uh, it's not that you don't have your hardships or you don't face situations like everybody else does, but you are highly favored of the Lord. How does somebody attract that kind of favor and begin to walk in that in their own life? That's very good. You know, I think it comes through obedience. You know, we're all, we all fail. We're all sinners. Nobody's perfect. The only perfect man got nailed to the cross. But if you look at like David and look at his life, you know, he always repented. Uh, he would always come back to the Lord. And God said, you know, he was a man after his own heart. So I think it's that we, we continue, you know, on our journey as a Christian, that we're growing. Are we closer to the Lord today than we were yesterday? Mm. I believe that we can all be as close to the Lord as we want to be. And uh, it takes a decision, first of all, that we're going to do that. You know, I've been, uh, this year, I started this year not knowing COVID was coming by doing daily devotions. I always do daily vo devotions, but it's a book called Unshakable Promises, Standing wow. on the Promises of God. What a book to read yeah. right before that broke up. Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, Wow. It really has affected me. And uh, so you have to grow. You have to feed yourself. What you feed grows. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you've got to spend time. You don't have to spend all day. You have to spend time in prayer. You have to get into the Word of God. And it will, you will grow and you will be able to be a blessing and to be blessed. Just one more thing on experiencing God. Uh, I was teaching a course one time called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, and I didn't want to just teach it. You have to do the assignments. And one of the assignments was make an appointment with God. Mm -hmm. And I have appointments all day long, but I thought, I've got to do this. So I thought, all right, Tuesday afternoon, 2 o'clock, my house, backyard, appointment with God. Tuesday came. I was busy. I looked on the calendar. Oh, I got an appointment with God. So I left the office and went home. I went to the back of my property there where I had written down I was going to meet with God. And guess what? God was waiting on me. Come on. <laughs> I felt his presence in such a powerful way. I walked for an hour back there with God. Not the only time. Wow. I got lots of stories. But God, want, God wants to meet with us more than we want to meet with him. Wow. We need to give God the time to meet with us. And, you know, once that happens and you've had that encounter... Whatever's in there is going to come out. And if you're in business, you know, put God first. There was a time uh, when my business grew. We got, we got twice as big, and we were already a large agency. We grew twice as big in one year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it was a thing. You ever read that scripture where God will pour out a blessing such you cannot contain it? So another way that I do this, by the way, is by giving. Remember God said, yeah, if you're successful... If you're successful, then, you know, you'll do with it what I want you to do with it. I've tried to be faithful to that in my giving. And I, this sounds boastful, but it, maybe it would just help somebody to understand. You know, I don't just tithe. I, that's the beginning when we read about giving is the tithe. And then it says and offerings. And so 20, 25 percent a year. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. And I know that. The favor of the Lord is on your life as you have trusted him in that area too. But not only just trusted him at the 10% level, but at, an, at the next level. There's many people I've, I've heard over time that when they take that step, 11%, 15%, 18%, 20%, the Lord just starts to show them that they're way better off on that 80% than they would have been on the, on the 100%. It's oh, beautiful. It's amazing. I love it. Um, yes. Any final thoughts you'd like to leave with people today? Any, anything that's on your heart? You know, uh, God is, he's, he's speaking today. 
this is a great time uh, to be a Christian. Uh, there's so much opportunity today. You know, people have always needed the Lord. There have always been challenges. But today especially, such an open door wow. that we all have. I would encourage you to put God first in all that you do. I would encourage you to be, uh, not be afraid to speak out. And it's a time we all need to be speaking up. We have always needed to speak up. You know, we're living in the last days, folks. And uh, Jesus is coming back Come on. for those that are looking for him. That's so are you looking for him? Let's, uh, let's not wait. Let's get started. Don't put it off. Get started today. Dig in deeper. Go deeper in the Lord. And he'll take you higher than you ever thought you could go. Come on, praise God. <laughs> Come on, I love it. Now, Bill, there might be somebody out there that says, hey, if I'm going to get my insurance, I want to get it through Bill Pancake. So where do they go to do that? BillPancake.com. Makes it pretty simple. <laughs> yes, it does. We'd love to have your business, and uh, we'd love to just share God's blessings with you. And other people may say, well, I might have a question about that episode. I want to get in contact with Bill directly. You can obviously... Uh, email us at info at kingdomencounters.us. We'd be happy to get that over Thank to you. Bill. But, but um, Bill, if, if they want to contact you directly, is there any way they can do that? Sure. Uh, you can call if you want to, 407-846-7941. That's my office. You can uh, email at, uh, again, bill at billpancake.com. And you go to billpancake.com. There's a place there you can communicate with us. Love to hear from you. Awesome. appreciate Thank that. Thank God. Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, for those that are watching today on YouTube, I encourage you, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you are updated when we release new content. And also for those on the Awaken the Wonder podcast, be sure to leave a review and a rating today. It helps us in the algorithm so that more people can hear the gospel message. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes with my global network and people that are joining us from all around the world in every sphere of society. We pray that you were encouraged today. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs in my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.